to recap a little on the, the, the word of God that we have just proclaimed now in the first reading, the whole set theme of today's readings and the first, the psalm and the gospel in particular, uh, is the theme of prophecy, the spoken word of God and how God in his word today um, calls us to be attentive, to listen to his word. And as we said in the response of your psalm, not to harden our hearts, or that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Moses, in the first reading, uh, who knows of his impending death, has reunited Israel, the people of God, before him, to tell, him, to tell them that after he dies, God will send them a prophet who will speak to them. Uh, uh, and they must listen to him. Now, who was that prophet who was to come? Well, there were many prophets sent by the Lord after Moses to the people of Israel who reminded them the teachings of Moses. Many a times, many a times, the people of God did not listen and did not obey. But the prophet, the prophet who was to come, who would be the new Moses, obviously is fulfilled in the person of Jesus, who in the gospel we hear today speaking with an authority that the people of God were not used to listening to. And, and, and by the power of his word, expulsed demons. Here is a teaching that is new. They were all astonished saying, here is a teaching that is new. He gives orders even to unclean spirits and they obey him and with an authority behind it. Um, this happened in Capernaum. Now Capernaum was a very privileged place because it was the base where Jesus uh, remained and focused the majority of his ministry to, to the people in Capernaum. Um, I was there in the Holy Land recently and the guide who was reminding us of these truths of the gospel um, told us about this event. We were actually there in this place where the synagogue was in Capernaum, where this took place. And Jesus spoke with authority and exposed the demon and everyone was amazed. And then just after that, coming out of the synagogue, he went to um, Peter's mother-in-law house. He healed her. And at the end of that day, people all gathered around. All the sick people and the possessed people came to him that evening at Peter's mother-in-law house and he healed them and he expulsed all the demons. He made such an impact in that village that at the end of his ministry there, there wasn't one ill person left in that town. He'd healed them all. Still, however, the gospel relates to us when Jesus is lamenting at the poor response to his ministry, he gives some uh, war to you, to different towns, Tyre and Sidon and Bethsaida and, and also Capernaum, when he says to Capernaum, and you Capernaum, you wish to be exalted as high as heaven, you shall be cast down into hell. For if the miracles that were done in you were done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented from their sins long ago. So there is an example of you know, the, the prophetic word of God coming into the lives of people, speaking with authority and acting with power and people being amazed, having this grace of receiving the word of God in their presence. However, what happened? They hardened their hearts. And, in, and this is on a, general, on a general scale. Not all of them, because obviously St. Peter didn't do that. 
and his house and his family didn't do that. And there might have been a few others, but on the general scale, Jesus was badly received, even though he had done wonders and his, his, his word of authority was there for all to hear. Still, they carried on with their lives in their own way. Here in the house, we have a problem with the tubes. They blocked up. They blocked up. God knows how, what, what it is that's blocking them up. And, 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 the, and the water's not going down the system. And it's overflowing. It's coming out. It's, it's spewing itself back out. Now, caustic soda is, is a solution of just a little bit of caustic soda. And you put it in the water and then you put it into the... Into the into the system, the water system, so that it burns and clears out the blockages there in the pipes. I'll have to get a few buckets more because I don't think what I put in is enough. Uh, so that's what caustic soda does. It, it's very toxic. It heats up the water, cold water, and after a while it's heated up the water that you put in the system. And so that then it, it, it unclogs the blockages. So that's what is needed in the life of men. Harden not your hearts. Or that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. God is speaking to us in all moments. How privileged people we are to have been able to, the length of our lives, heard so much from the living word of God, to be able to participate in his healing sacraments. Uh, to receive his word in person in the Holy Eucharist. But unfortunately, in the lives of many, it seems outwardly anyway, that not much change has gone on and his word has been poorly received. What is happening? We need something to soften the hardness of our hearts, to unblock the blockages of our spiritual tubes, so to speak, uh, that is filled with its selfishness and pride and, and all the rest of all these uh, sinful attitudes and behaviours which speak of not receiving the word of God and failing to live it. There's a group of people in this time now leading up to, to, to Easter uh, that are practicing a life of, let's say, uh, spiritual asceticism, discipline. They, they are put, they're pouring the, the caustic soda into their lives, so to speak, by the practices that they live. Uh, it's called the practice of Exodus 90. I don't know if you've heard of it. And for the women, uh, Fiat 90. Where for 90 days leading up, to Easter in order to have a, a detox uh, to, to, to unblock those spiritual tubes that are all blocked up. They are daily practicing uh, a life of discipline, of spiritual discipline, saying no to all those selfish, perhaps they're not, they're not bad things in themselves, but they know that they have a, a disordered attachment to these things and how these things can hold on to them and block up the spiritual uh, sensibility, so to speak, which impedes them from listening to the Word of God, hearing it, and of course, then in being able to fulfill it. So then every day they have a spiritual diet of uh, renunciation, not taking milk in their coffee, not watching television, not using the, the internet, uh, cold showers, uh, an increase in prayer time, la da da, and all of these things. It's like pouring into their spiritual heart, which is all blocked up from all the selfishness that each and every one of us suffers from in order to detoxificate themselves. And then for the, when Easter time arrives, they are more spiritually clean with a pure heart and sensitive to be able to hear the word of God who speaks to us in the realm of the spirit and not in the flesh. So, if 
from all of this that we have just heard, what conclusions can we take out? We all need a bit of a spiritual detoxification, put into ourselves a bit of caustic soda, spiritual caustic soda, to unblock the blockages in our heart, in our spiritual lives, so as to be able to more be sensitive to the Word of God so that we can fulfill it in our lives. So we can ask for the intercession through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother that we can do that in our lives uh, to be a little bit more disciplined in the practice of penances, of renunciations, uh, and to giving of our time to God in more prayer. Amen.